In this short video, I'll give you an overview of four simple do-it-yourself garden soil tests in step-by-step -step fashion that'll give you a good indicator of just how healthy your soil is going into the growing season, and you can use it periodically throughout throughout the, the year to, uh, to see if you need amendments or what you need to do to adjust your soil. There's essentially four tests, and I'll go through each of these within the video. The first one's a soil pH test, where you actually get the, the pH most plants want between 6 and 7 on a pH meter, so we'll do that one and show you how to do it. The soil ribbon test, which essentially is a way to identify the texture and get some understanding of, of kind of the structure of your soil. Next is a percolation test, which shows you how quickly your soil drains. Try and keep those, those roots from getting waterlogged. And then lastly is the warm test, which essentially showed, shows us the, uh, the biological um, welcome factor of your soil, right? How welcoming is it to, to biological um, and bacterial and, and uh, fungal growth? So we'll go ahead and go through each of these one by one. So let's go ahead and go out to the garden and get started with the test. The first test is pretty simple. It's a pH test. You can easily either use a meter like I have here. We offer these on our website. Or you can send it in, or there's soil kits that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's or your garden center that'll show you the pH. And our goal here is to be between 6 and 7. If you're not, you can add amendments and uh, adjust that so that your plants will be happy. Secondly, I'm going to do the ribbon test. So in order to do this, I want to clear away some of the mulch in the topsoil and kind of get to the foundation. So you can see as I dig here... I can start to get an idea for the, uh, the, the soil. Mine's not super wet. I want to wet it for this ribbon test. And essentially what we do is we take a lump of, uh, of soil in the palm of our hand. And uh, we want it to be moist. And when we squeeze it between our thumb and forefinger, you see we create kind of a ribbon of soil, a, a thin ribbon. And essentially... What we're looking for is it either all sticks together and I can create a really long ribbon as I squeeze. It creates a shorter ribbon and breaks apart slowly or it just comes out crumbling. And the, the first is actually a sign of clay soil. The second is loamy, silty soil. And the, the last is actually sandy soil. You can see here that mine's a, a little bit sandy but it actually sticks together so it's a nice kind of silty loam which is ex exactly what you want holds water has lots of air holes for um, oxygen and, and uh, retention of nutrients and I like to do it at a couple different levels just to make sure as I go down into my root structure um, I can uh, I can get a feel for the uh, for, for kind of the texture of the soil and, and what I need to add and how I need to improve it over the growing season or uh, over the winter to make it uh, more hospitable for my, my plants and the roots. While I'm doing that, I can look for some worms and we'll, we'll talk about that here in a minute. But uh, you can see here, I've got some, some really nice soil. Uh, this is my hydrangea bed, which I've worked on over the years that, uh, that really has a, a nice texture to it and it, it feels, uh, feels really good. So, um, for the next test, test I want to keep digging. Uh, we're going to do a perk test. So you can see as I get lower, um, we'll get down to about uh, 12, 9 to 12 inches. And what we're going to do is fill this hole with water. So I want to kind of clear some things out and, and make it a good test bed um, for, for my fill up. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and fill it with water. I brought along my, uh, my watering can. We'll go ahead and fill this with water. And essentially what we're going to do is watch this over the next 15 minutes and see what happens. Okay, so if you think about it, as it rains and the water table starts to rise within your soil, you want to make sure that that's going to drain away effectively. And 15 minutes is a, a pretty good feel. Essentially what we want to do over 15 minutes, and you'll see that this slowly tapers for us and s starts to drain. You can actually see it start to drain a little bit out. And I've got a, I'll speed up the, the video here in a minute and kind of show you where we end up. So here's after about 15 minutes. If you take a peek at the soil and you look down, you can actually see it's gone down two to three inches or so. I measured it with the ruler and uh, 
essentially that's enough to to uh, represent great drainage. So uh, if it's still there and it's still full, you've got a drainage problem. You want to definitely add some uh, some structure and some some sand to your soil to make it uh, drain better. Now the last piece, uh, when I dug out my hole, uh, I actually took out some of the the soil. Um, what we're going to do is put it into a, a sifter, or in this case, I just use one of my crates. We're actually going to count worms. So the the worm test, you actually go through your soil and count worms. Anything under ten uh, probably needs some improvement. You need to add some organic structure in there so the it's a little more friendly to the worms. And uh, I'll dig through here, and essentially, uh, this is the middle of winter. And as I dig through here, I found about five or six worms, and you'll you'll see some of them as I go through. They're pretty small, so you can miss them, um, especially if they're they're brand new uh, brand new worms. But as I go through this, you can see I'll find a few. I'll actually show them to you. And these these worms are actually a great representation of the health of the soil. Um, if it's welcoming to biologics, it's going to be welcoming to your uh, your plants, right? So. Um, and these guys also do a, a great number on the soil. They they process it through. They convert it to almost fertilizer. And then they also create um, wormholes and uh, structure throughout the soil, which gives it spots for oxygen and nutrients and, and water as well. So uh, they're a great representation. You definitely want a lot of worms in your garden to, uh, to make it more amenable to your plants and, and help them be healthy um, in the long run. So... If you found this useful, there's a ton more information on our blog. If you go to thecelticfarm.com, click on blog, you'll actually go to our potting bench. And there's a number of short and long articles that you can read more about uh, the topic. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up, like it, and uh, go ahead and subscribe for more. Thanks.